In this video, we're going to look at some more examples of mass-to-mass -mass conversions. So your first step is always to read the problem carefully and then write the complete balanced reaction for the problem. Remember to look at the word clues to tell you how to write the reaction. In this problem, it tells us that it asks us for the mass of copper 2 oxide that remains after heating 5.50 grams of copper 2 carbonate to decomposition. So copper 2 oxide will remain after heating. Remember, heat's our little triangle. So the copper 2 oxide, copper is a 2 plus, oxygen is a 2 minus, and it's after heating. So we know that that will be a product, so CuO. And then our 5.5 grams of copper 2 carbonate. Copper is a 2 plus, carbonate is a 2 minus, so it's going to be CuCO3. So we know that the copper 2 carbonate was heated and it produced copper 2 oxide. And I hope that you're realizing that this is a decomposition reaction and that there's an additional product that we have to consider. So remember to look at your reference table and our other product for this reaction is CO2. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to convert our grams of copper to carbonate to figure out how many grams of copper to oxide to, that we have. Remember that the only way to go from one substance to another is to use that mole to mole ratio. So let's start with our mass from our problem. So 5.50 grams of copper to carbonate. And again, just encouraging you to use those chemical formulas so you don't get mixed up. All right, so set up your conversion factor. Remember that we want our units to cancel, so grams of copper 2 carbonate on the bottom, and then we want moles of copper 2 carbonate on the top. We're going to go from grams to moles of copper 2 carbonate using the molar mass, from moles of copper 2 carbonate to moles of copper 2 oxide using the mole to mole ratio from our balanced reaction, and then we're going to use our molar mass of copper 2 oxide to go from moles of copper 2 oxide to grams of copper 2 oxide. You can see that when we wrote this reaction it was already nicely balanced. So our molar mass of copper 2 carbonate, 1 copper, 1 carbon, and 3 oxygens is 123.56. Remember that that is the mass of 1 mole of copper 2 carbonate, so the molar mass always goes with the grams. And then we need to use our mole to mole ratio. So we need moles of copper 2 carbonate on the bottom to cancel. And then moles of copper 2 oxide on the top, because that's what we're trying to get to next. And we know from our balanced equation that there's a 1 to 1 ratio. 1 mole of copper 2 carbonate produces 1 mole of copper 2 oxide. And then our last step is just to calculate that molar mass of copper 2 oxide so that we can go from moles of copper 2 oxide to grams of copper 2 oxide. Remember that our molar mass always goes with the grams and we know that one mole of copper 2 oxide has a mass of 79.55 grams. When you plug that into your calculator, remember to multiply the numbers on the top, divide by each of the numbers on the bottom, you should end up with 3.54 grams of copper 2 carbon oxide. Sorry, copper 2 oxide. Uh, let's try another example. So read this one. Remember to think about those word clues as you set up the first step, which is our balanced reaction. It says, what mass of oxygen is required to completely oxidize 4.5 grams of aluminum metal? So let's try to figure that out. Uh, it's asking us the amount of oxygen that's needed to react with that aluminum. So we know it's going to be aluminum and it's going to be oxygen as reactants. And hopefully you remember that oxygen is diatomic. So looking at this, I hope that you're seeing that this is a synthesis reaction and uh, the compound that it forms is aluminum oxide. Remember that aluminum has a plus three charge in an ionic compound and oxygen has a minus two. So it's Al2O3 as a product. Now we need to balance it. We've got three oxygens here and two on the left, so let's put 
a three here and a two here to give us six oxygens. And then we can easily balance the aluminum since it's all by itself. So let's go ahead and start with our mass of aluminum metal. We're going to go from our mass of aluminum to moles of aluminum using our molar mass of aluminum. Then we're going to go from moles of aluminum to moles of oxygen using our mole to mole ratio from our balanced reaction. Then we're going to go from moles of oxygen to mass of oxygen using our molar mass of oxygen. So remember that we want to think about having our units cancel, so grams of aluminum on the bottom, and we want to go to moles first. So grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum, and when you look on the periodic table, we know that one mole of aluminum is 26.98 grams. And then we set up our next conversion factor, which is going to be our mole to mole ratio. We want to go from moles of aluminum, so that will cancel, and then we want to get to moles of oxygen, since that's the substance we're being asked about. And if you look at our equation, we know that four moles of aluminum require three moles of oxygen to fully react. And then our next step is going to be to go from moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. So moles of O2 on the bottom to cancel, grams of O2 on top. Remember, because oxygen is diatomic, there are two oxygen atoms there. So one mole of oxygen is equal to 32.00 grams of oxygen. And I will tell you that that is a common mistake for students to make. So just remember to be careful when you use oxygen. Recall that it's diatomic. Go ahead and plug that into your calculator. And you should see that that comes out with 4.00 grams of O2 to fully react all of that aluminum metal. Let's go through one more quick example. Again, our first step is going to be that complete balanced reaction, so let's set that up. So what mass of hydrogen can be produced? So hydrogen is a product. It's going to be diatomic, so H2 on the right, and it's produced by the reaction of 10 grams of sodium, so it's just sodium metal, with water. And I'm hopeful that you're looking at this and saying, wait a minute, we're missing a couple of atoms here on the right, so we need to look at our reference table. And I'm hopeful that you see that this is a single replacement, a metal replacing hydrogen. And it produces hydrogen gas, and it produces the metal's hydroxide. Sodium is a plus one, hydroxide is a minus one, so it would be NaOH. And there are a couple of ways to balance this one. The quickest way is to go ahead and put in a one-half here in front of our hydrogen, and that gives us the two hydrogens, and then everything else is balanced. You also have the option of multiplying these all through by two, and that would give you a different set of coefficients. That would give you a two, a two, a one, and a two. I'm just going to leave the half in there and we'll see how that goes. So we're going to start off with our mass of sodium. We're going to use our molar mass of sodium to convert to moles of sodium in our first step. Once we have moles of sodium, we're going to use our mole to mole ratio to convert from moles of sodium to moles of hydrogen. Then we're going to use our molar mass of hydrogen in our last step to convert to grams. So grams of sodium on the bottom, moles of sodium on the top, from your reference table, you can see that one mole of sodium has a mass of 22.99 grams. Our next step, that middle step, is always that mole to mole ratio. So we want to go from moles of sodium, put them on the bottom so they cancel, to moles of H2. We know that one mole of sodium will produce 0 0.5 or one half moles of H2. If you wanted to, you could put two on the bottom and one on the top. It's whichever way you're more comfortable. It'll give you the same answer because the ratio is the same. Then we need to put our third conversion factor in. We want to go from moles of hydrogen to grams of hydrogen. Remember, because it's diatomic, that one mole of hydrogen is 2.016 grams. And when you punch all those into your calculator, hopefully you're pausing and doing that right now, you get 0 0.438 grams of hydrogen. 
Hope you're getting the hang of these. If you're not, come and see me for help or ask me some questions about them in class. I'll see you there.